I hope you're enjoying this control panel building series. If you're seeing this clip, then you've entered in the middle of the series, so make sure you go back to part one and see it all the way through. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell us in the comments what you think about this video series and what you'd like to see the next one on. Now, the first thing I like to do when building a control panel is I like to cut all the holes in the enclosure. That way, once the components are in there, we're not cutting, making metal shavings and making a mess. Now, the one exception to that is I will not cut the hole for the disconnect in this panel. A lot of people will, you know, draw theirs completely out and they'll say, yes, I know exactly where it goes and I can drill this and there's no problem. Well, I don't do it that way for several reasons. On one, um, I like to really look at the panel once I have it laid out and say, okay, um, now is this going to be easy to work on? Is this going to be where the electrician can put his power in easy? What if he has to replace this component? And a lot of times what I saw in the drawing isn't exactly what turns out on the actual panel. So that's why I wait on that. Uh, but this particular panel is going to get a vent cut in here and a vent cut in here. Now when laying out panels, a square is absolutely your best friend. And this is my favorite square right here, but I have squares all the way from I think 4 inches up to 6 feet. Make sure you have the right square for the particular job you have. Now some people will argue with me about this, but I like to use the actual component whenever possible to lay out the panels. And the reason for that is, is there are occasionally errors in drawings that you get online. Now, it's not as often as it used to be, but still, if you have the components sitting right here, it's always good to do a double check. Also, I did show you earlier, I have a variety of tape measures. Everybody thinks this tape measure is so cute, but it's also very skinny. So when you're in tight situations, you can um, make sure you get a good measurement. Because a lot of times people have their big fat max tape measure, which I have several of. But if you're trying to get into a tight spot, you'll end up guessing, and then later on you'll look and your component will be crooked. Now one thing I'm not actually going to show on the video is the cutting of the control panel itself. And the reason for that is I have the camera set up here, but I don't control, cut control panels here. And I would highly recommend that you have a separate area, even if it's a little area outside, to cut your control panels, which is not in the area that you wire. Because even when I come in, you're going to see I have grit on my hands and everything, so you need to wash your hands after you've cut. You need to wipe the panel off really good after you're done cutting. That's one reason I cut everything in the beginning, too, is because I want to wipe the panel out really good. But I mostly use a cutoff wheel on a grinder to cut holes like this. And please, everyone, please have your earplugs and your safety glasses in when you do it. All right, back from cutting our panel. And uh, one question we always get is, does the cutoff wheel burn the paint? As you can see, there's no real burn around it. By the time you deburr it, it's actually just about the width of that. But that's one thing I did forget to bring up is how I deburr. Now, first of all, every hole in your panel needs deburred. You should be able to rub your finger all the way around the inside and the outside of the hole. Because eventually somebody's about to change something or something's going to fall out. And maybe it's you reaches their hand in and cuts yourself. Uh, but so I do use a dyna file to deburr my panels. It works really well. I go all the way around the inside, all the way around the outside. But if you're not fortunate enough to have one, a typical file will work. But I, I do have a few cautions for you is don't get in a hurry. I mean, this is one time that don't be doing sitting there doing this number. Because as you're sitting there just wildly doing it, that file will slide out and then you'll come down and you'll jab the panel and you'll put a scratch in it. Same thing with the inside as you're deburring it. Make sure you're paying attention to where you're at inside, what you may be hitting. Are you hitting the panel over here when you're filing? So now that we have our holes cut in this, oh, and the other thing, because I just did it. See how dirty my hands are now? That's why I have it separated. In fact, normally I would have washed my hands before I came in here, but I wanted to show you that part. So I'm going to go wash my hands, wipe the fingerprints off that I just put on it, and then actually I will wrap this panel back up and I'm going to put it back in the box because we're going to go start working on the panel. And with it just sitting around your shop, you'd never think it, but it's a magnet to things hitting it. And so if it's sitting there unprotected, you'll end up with scratches all over it. So if you're not working on it, make sure it's wrapped up. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.